Christian Business Connection, connecting your business or ministry to the world. Good morning and welcome to the CBC Radio Show. I'm your host, Evangelist Nona Thomas, in my weekly declaration that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Hallelujah. I'm glad. I'm excited. I know that on this last Sunday, July 31st, God is doing some great things in the kingdom of God. I know he is. I know he is. He is blessing us. In fact, let's just say to God, be the glory for all he's done, all he's doing. Oh my goodness, right now. Hallelujah. And he's done a great thing because our program is fantastic today, as it always is. We just bless him. He sends such wonderful people to be a part of the CBC radio show, and I give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. Let me say that I encourage you to give us a call at 314-270-2225 if you would like to be a part of of the CBC radio show. Do you have a business? Are you in ministry? This is an excellent way to hear from you, for you to talk about what God is doing and how you want to be a blessing to the people. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, today's broadcast is great. Let me tell you the rundown. We've got some fantastic people. We have first on the program today, Pastor Keith Scarborough, the senior pastor of the Word at Shaw Church. You know, I just want to say that the Word at Shaw is doing such a fantastic job in South St. Louis, throughout St. Louis, and I want to thank uh, Pastor Keith for all that he has allowed me to do in the ministry there. I thank him so much. The Coffee House, if you want to have an intimate event, a wonderful event at the Coffee House at Shaw, give me a call. I can give you a tour of the facility. Oh, let me tell you, it's a list of things that God is doing at the Word is Shaw. Thank you, Pastor Keith, for allowing me to have my launch service there for my new ministry. Thank you so much. Blessings, great blessings upon you your assistant pastor, Pastor Vance Watt. We thank you so much for all that you all are doing. And also we're going to have on the program today, my goodness, how could we leave out Bishop Prentice Thomas, my friend? We just bless Bishop for being a part of the show today. He's giving us the final chapter of Faith Matters. He has been preaching and speaking on the program throughout the entire month of July and his subject has been Faith Matters. So you don't want to miss today on what he's going to say. Then we also want to say thank you so much for being on the program during the entire month of July. Apostle Frank Bio, he has been our CBC July Author of the Month. His book, The Watchman Sees, Part 2, Seeing Beyond What You See, A More Sure Word of Prophecy. He's going to be with us today. And then we're going to be speaking with Miss Andrea Stewart. She is the owner. She is the chef. She's the one at Banana Yummies Bakes and Burgers right there in Ferguson. She's going to talk about the great things going on at her restaurant. You know, we always have our healthy living tip from none other than Dr. Tebow, Dr. Katrina thompson Bowdry. She's got a great, great tip for you today. So, friends, I can't tell it all. I just can't. I can't because you got to hear it for yourself. Tell somebody about it. Call, text somebody and tell them that the CBC radio show is on and that they are going to be blessed. Don't forget about our upcoming women's retreat in October. Give me a call to get information about that. It's going to be wonderful. Our women's retreat in October. We're taking you to the next level in Christ Jesus. All right, friends, I'm going to take a short break. Don't go anywhere. Stay with me. And look, when I come back, we're going to hear from none of Other than Pastor Keith Scarborough, the word at Shaw. I'll be right back. What's going on? It's your boy Scooter, and you are now listening to the CBC radio show with evangelist Nona Thomas. Ladies, you are invited to a special women's retreat hosted by myself, Evangelist Nona Thomas, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, October 14th through 17th at Sojourn Christian Retreat, located in Dittmer, Missouri. Our theme for this retreat is your refreshing for the next level. One cost includes bus transportation, two-night accommodations, meals, snacks, pampering, giveaways, and so, so much more. This time of refreshing is for your 
your next level that God is preparing you for. Call 314-270-2225 to get more information. Don't miss what God is doing at this retreat. This is Apostle Bio. I've been hosted on the program CBC, author of the month. I am really excited to have been with uh, Evangelist Thomas. This is an exciting time. We're introducing our book, which is called The Watchman Sees Book 2, uh, Seeing Beyond What You See. The fact is that this book is not designed to bring fear, but it's to inform and to bless the individuals. It is a topical book. It's not chronological, but yet what it will do is it will inform you as to what is going on, and this is nothing more than a clarification or an explanation of current events. So, therefore, be blessed. If you're interested in getting this book, which I know you will, I suggest that you contact me at bioministries.org or bioministries at gmail.com, and you'll have plenty of information on how you can order this book. But be sure you listen to the rest of the month because we're going to be continuing to talk on this book, The Watchman Sees, book two, and this will be on this program, CBC radio show. The Lord bless you and keep you. Welcome back to the CBC radio show. I'm your host, Evangelist Nona Thomas. And friends, I told you at the top of the program, I was so excited this morning because we're going to be speaking with Pastor Keith Scarborough, the pastor of The Word at Shaw. I'm so excited about the things that we're going to talk about this morning that I believe are going to be a blessing to you. So I want to welcome to the CBC radio show, Pastor Keith. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, you're welcome. Now, Pastor, I didn't prep you on this question. It's something that I ask everybody who comes on the show. And that is, is this the day that the Lord has made for you? Oh, man. God is doing great things uh, in our city. And uh, I'm just so happy that God has allowed me to be a part of it. And so every morning I wake up with just this awe and wonder of, <laughs> you know, God, what, look what you're doing, and, and thanks for letting me have a front row seat to get to watch what's going on. Amen. Amen. That's a good answer, Pastor. I tell you, you know, it's, I often say that it's just so amazing that he uses decorated dust like us. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Well, Pastor, uh, God is doing some amazing things through your ministry at the church. What I love about the word at Shaw, you have an expression uh, on your printed materials that you say it's a different kind of church. Tell us why, Pastor. Well, uh, we don't do things like most any other place does, and I think more that that may be more a reflection of uh, of the people who live in our community mm-hmm. uh, than than anything else. But we kind of came to be, uh, you know, St. Louis, and and to look like the people who are walking around us. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, Dr. King said that the the most segregated hour in America was 11 a.m on Sunday morning, and uh, our Sunday morning is extremely diverse. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you know, mm-hmm. um, our, our staff is uh, both African-American and white, and our congregation is about 50-50, mm-hmm. and so that's an unusual uh, place just to begin with. Mm-hmm. But then on top of that, you know, I don't wear robes. I don't. I, I ever, whenever I wear a tie, I get criticized, <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, we don't do things that are uh, ritualistic. It's a it's a fun and casual place, and uh, it's just a place where we can celebrate what God is doing uh, in our lives and through our lives and into our community. Well, I do have to uh, amen that, Pastor, because my first time coming to the church, uh, you really could just feel a just a spirit of peace and love. I mean, it was really greeting you as you walked in the door, and, and only God can do that. Isn't that right? That's right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Tell us about the service times uh, for the different things you have at the church, Pastor. Yeah. Well, we we start our our service in the worship center at 11 a.m., but we open uh, before that. You know, uh, evangelists, when we... um, when we set out to do something in a multicultural way, then we we recognized instantly that we needed to create um, environments that would allow people just to sit and talk. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, we do very little talk about race relations. We always just say, um, let's get closer to Jesus. The closer we get mm-hmm. to Jesus, the closer we'll be to each other. Mm-hmm. And uh, part of that uh, breaks down into, you know, environments that allow people to have holy conversations. Mm -hmm. And uh, we invite people to come early. We have a coffee house 
uh, here. Uh, we actually, when we planted the church, we're, this is our fifth um, March, mm-hmm. and so uh, when we planted the church, we actually moved into an old United Methodist building, and so one of the first things that we did after we finished the sanctuary was uh, we ripped out three classrooms and created a coffee house. Uh, because we believe that coffee house environments are better than classrooms, at least for the neighborhood that we're trying to to, to connect to. Mm-hmm. And so we ha- we open up our coffee house, and people come in, they check their emails, they sit around and drink Hartford Coffee Company coffee, and uh, just kind of relax into the morning. And that opens at ten thirty. So we spend a good thirty minutes before you know, kind of getting caffeined up before we go in and work. <laughs> well, Pastor, I'm so glad you mentioned the coffee house at Shaw because that was my introduction to the church, to the ministry, and I'm so excited to be a part of uh, what God is doing with the coffee house and bringing new business and bringing, you know, people to be aware of the coffee house at Shaw. Yeah, it's a great place. It's turned out to be more than a Sunday morning uh, collect a place where people can gather. Um, we do things uh, for the community here all the time. Uh, we have an AA meeting that meets every Wednesday night here, and it's a great group. More than fifty people, usually you know more like a hundred folks, gather there, and uh, and it's open to our community. Uh, but beyond that, we we have community parties like seed exchanges and uh, holiday dances there. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we in in the midst of all of the trials that our city has been going through, we've been hosting uh, uh, what we're just calling the conversation, and it's just pe- neighbors mm-hmm. coming in. Mm-hmm. And so most of the people who come to those, and we've had up to 100 of those, I think we've, I think we've done eight of them already, um, most of the people who come there do not attend the church. A good faction do, but most of them don't. Mm-hmm. But we wanted to be open to the community and be doing things for you know for our community, a place where people can gather and uh, and meet each other because we find that is a, you know that's a value of ours. And so uh, last Friday we had uh, we hosted a. Uh, a spoken word night, and uh, I know you were there, but uh, mm-hmm. that was with our friends with Faith Communities, mm-hmm. and it was a fundraiser for our uh, for AIDS community. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I know we have a, a a comedy night coming. I'm really excited about that. Yes. You're, yeah, you're bringing that in, and then uh, and then some other some other jazz nights, and just ways that people can come together and good clean entertainment, yes. spend the time together, and uh, and you know it doesn't. Uh, I don't. Uh, this is not meant to insult. It just doesn't feel like church, you know. <laughs> it's really nice, kind of vibey place where yes. people can connect. And you know, Jesus acted in those places all the time, more yes. than in church setting. Yeah. And so that's where we feel like He's still working that way here. Yes, He is. Well, I want to let my listeners know that if you're just tuning in this morning, we're talking with Pastor Keith Scarborough, the pastor at the Word at Shaw Church. Now, Pastor, I I, I know folks are, are listening and they're like, well, how can we get connected? Tell us how right. we can get connected to the Word at Shaw. Right. We are, Well, first off, our website's fairly easy. It's the name of our church, the Word at Shaw. Mm-hmm. Everything's spelled out, smushed mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a .org address. And um, all of our events, all of our calendar, everything that we do there is there. Um, we have served, by the way, we're located right across the street from the Botanical Garden. Most people know where we're at. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're on the corner of Tower Grove and Shaw. That's the reason why, for the name. Uh, but right across from the Missouri Botanical Garden. Uh, we have uh, uh, mission projects all the time. We actually run a, uh, a furniture showroom. Um, store. Uh, it's for the Shalom House, which is a uh, homeless shelter just about a mile away from our location here uh, for uh, ladies. And so ladies go through their program. By the way, they have a 97% success rate. When they go through Shalom House, uh, they are no longer homeless. Uh, our little church in only, our, in only four years has helped 45 ladies leave the shelter, come off the street, into the shelter, off the shelter, out of the shelter, into their own furnished apartment, and we're, oh. the, we're the folks who do the furnishings. And so we uh, collect furniture, clean furniture, repair furniture, pack furniture, load furniture, and then <laughs> set up apartments uh, for them. And so you can help with that. You can help us with our work with Shalom House. Uh, on Thursdays, we have a program we call SNAP, which is an after-school Shaw neighborhood after-school program uh, for kids 
uh, under 16, 10 to 16 years old, and uh, that's a, there's plenty of opportunities to serve there. And then, of course, on Sunday morning, just come. And, you know, we, we say some people like to come and jump in and, and become members and, like, you know, start to serve and, and, and do all those things. But we also leave plenty of room just to sit and listen, just mm-hmm. come in and kind of check it out. And, uh, you know, Jesus always said, come and see, come and see, come and see. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we, we leave plenty of room for that. So, you know, if you or friends of yours uh, don't have a church, and uh, and are a little skeptical of church, that's kind of who we want to meet. We want to meet people like that so they can come in, relax, see the environment, and then start to be filled with the Spirit of God. Well, I, I definitely felt like I was at home. I felt like I've already been grafted in, and uh, you're going to look up, Pastor, and see me walking through the door just to come and, and, uh, and, and sup with you uh, every that's now good. and then. Would that be all right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. Wonderful. Well, Pastor, we're just about out of time. And uh, give us the address again uh, for the word at Shaw. Sure. It's 4265 Shaw. And uh, it's on the corner of Tower Grove and Shaw, right across from the Missouri Botanical Garden. And uh, it's, a, it's an older uh, United Methodist Church building, uh, but uh, when you step inside, you'll see what all our volunteers have been doing to refurbish it and make it all brand new. Amen. Is there anything else that you'd like to say in closing, Pastor Keith? Hey, i just love to say God bless you to everybody who is listening. God is doing great things. And God, our God, the God we serve, is one who can take horrible things such as the things we're going through right now, and turn them into good. And uh, I know that's going to happen for our city. And as I've said, I'm so thrilled that God has allowed us to be a part of it and have a front row seat to watch how he's at work in our city. Amen. Me too, Pastor. Bless you. You are a joy, Pastor Keith. Thank you so much for being a part of the CBC Radio Show today. God bless you. All righty. Friends, we're going to take a short break right here. Stay with me. I'll be right back. What's going on? It's your boy Scooter, and you are now listening to the CBC Radio Show with Evangelist Nona Thomas. Hi, this is Evangelist Nona Thomas, inviting you to tune in to Hallelujah 1600 at 4 p.m. every Wednesday for the midweek message. Friends, let me tell you, this program will encourage you. It will inspire you. It will be the boost that will be right on time in the Word of God for your Wednesday afternoon. So tune in every Wednesday, 4 p.m., right here on Hallelujah 1600 for the midweek message with Evangelist Nona Thomas. To God be the glory. Good morning, everybody. My name is Vance Watt. I'm the worship arts pastor at the Word at Shaw Church here in St. Louis, Missouri, where we serve the community in word and in deed. I'm so excited to be here this morning on the CBC radio show with evangelist Nona Thomas. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to you and your family to come worship with us at the Word at Shaw at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. We're located at 4265 Shaw Boulevard, St. Louis, Missouri, 63110. Or you can visit our website at www.thewordatshaw.com. Org. God bless. Ladies, you are invited to a special women's retreat hosted by myself, Evangelist Nona Thomas, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, October 14th through 17th at Sojourn Christian Retreat, located in Dittmer, Missouri. Our theme for this retreat is You Are Refreshing for the Next Level. One cost includes bus transportation, two night accommodations, meals, snacks, pampering, giveaways, and so, so much more. This time of refreshing is for your next level that God is preparing you for. Call 314-270-2225 to get more information. Don't miss what God is doing at this retreat. Welcome back to the CBC Radio Show. I'm your host, Evangelist Nona Thomas. And friends, I tell you, we have been blessed this entire mm-hmm. month yeah. of July yeah, yes. with Bishop Prentice Thomas, my friend, mm-hmm. who has been taking us through our series mm-hmm. all month, Faith Matters. Now, yeah. you're going to conclude that thing today, Bishop okay. is, and I'm just excited. I don't know what the mm-hmm. Lord is going to give him to say, but <laughs> I'm excited. So I want to welcome yeah. to the CBC Radio Show, Bishop Prentice 
Chris Thomas. Well, I'll say God bless America. It's so good to be here with my evangelist, evangelist Nona Thomas, looking over there smiling and looking all good. Well, Let's we're here Jesus. today talking about faith matters. You know, on last week, evangelist, I gave them those four D's about right. discouragement, distraction, delay, and all of that. Yes. And then I told them that on today, I would be talking about how faith is your servant. And so we want to go to the book of St. Luke, uh, the 17th chapter and the sixth verse. And I want to read this scripture and we want to talk about how faith is your servant. So your faith really matters because your faith is actually your servant. And Jesus is talking here. We're in St. Luke, the 17th chapter and the sixth verse. And it reads, and the Lord said, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the roots and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you. Oh my God. But which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by when he is come in from the field, go and sit down to meet. Mm-hmm. And will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup and gird thyself and serve me until I have eaten and drunken and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I troll not. So likewise, ye, when you have done all the things which were commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants, for we have done that which is our duty to do. Now, I'm reading from St. Luke chapter 17, Mm -hmm. and I really should have started with the fifth verse, amen, which reads, and the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And so immediately Jesus started talking about, if you have faith, a grain of a mustard seed, you can say to this sycamine tree, be plucked up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then he went to give them the example, say, and if you have a servant plowing in the field, working in the field, when he comes in, you don't say to him, you don't just let him immediately sit down and just eat. No, you say, serve me first, mm-hmm. and then you can sit down and eat. Your faith is a servant. So when a person actually exercises their faith, they're actually sending their faith out to do the work for them. Amen. You, you, your faith is your servant. You send your faith out to do the work for for you. I have a hymn that the Lord gave me that I wrote. It call, it's called A Moment of Praise. And the words declare that a moment of praise tis better than a day long of sorrow. It's like sweet perfume that embraces the master's nostril. So will you. Oh my God. Yes. Take one moment yes. to reflect on all he's done when your faith is still out there. You know, even when your faith is still out there on the line. I'm sort of getting the words mixed up, but it's talking about when you have uh, set your faith in your faith is out there working for you. Mm-hmm. People have to realize that your faith is out there working for you in the unseen, invisible realm of the spirit. It's working on uh, whatever the assignment is. Your yeah. faith is doing that. Your faith is your servant yeah. and your faith goes to work for you, whether it's physically, mentally, financially, socially, whatever area it is, your faith is your servant. And this is what Jesus is talking about. Your faith, your faith really matters because it's your servant that is out there working for you. Another scripture declares that um, while you are sleeping, amen, you don't know how the seed is growing. First the blade, then the ear, then the full ear and the corn. Still symbolizing the word, but also symbolizing your faith. Yes. Because while you're sleeping, see really, some of us that are disturbed with our sleep because of all these troubles, all these situations, amen, really we're supposed to be sleep because our faith is in Jesus and our faith is out there working for us. Hallelujah. Working in our our behalf. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. I love that. My faith is my servant. Yes. My Lord. Because mm-hmm. faith without, well, number one, faith without works is dead. You know, mm-hmm. we talk so often about, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I, I, I want this. I'm seeking this from the Lord. and But there are things that we have to do as well. Am I right, Bishop? Mm-hmm. Right. And our major part is uh, hearing the word, believing the word, and being ready to move with the Holy Spirit in regards to our faith. When our faith is out. You said faith without works is dead. Amen. That means working your faith. Yes. Your, your faith has to be working. A lot of people assume that they're in faith and they're not. But when you're actually in faith, your faith is working for you. And so while your faith is working for you, amen, you're giving God praise. You're giving God glory. Yes. Amen. And also you are ready to move with the Holy Spirit yes. step by step toward the manifestation of your faith that is out there working for you. 
A lot of times when I when I'm talking about faith being your servant, you can even see your faith as an angel out there working, or you can see it even as Jesus mm. working, amen, because he is the author and finisher of, right. of your faith. And so he said, you know, my faith is out there working for me right now, yes. amen, because your faith is your servant. God is putting things together for you, amen. Your faith is out there. He's whispering in people's ear in your behalf. Glory, Glory be to God. to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's causing favor to happen for you. Yes. He's opening doors for you, amen, and then the Holy Holy Spirit, whisper to your heart, take this step, move this way, move that way, because your faith is your servant. Yes, it is. Yes, mm-hmm. it is. And, you know, just as you're speaking about this, Bishop, and you've mm-hmm. been talking all month long, every Sunday, mm-hmm. you've been talking about faith, faith matters. matters. Yes. And, you know, as you've been speaking, you've been speaking mm-hmm. faith, you've been prophesying, uh-huh. you've been speaking into everyone's mm-hmm. life who's mm-hmm. heard this broadcast, yes. encouraging yes. them that, you know, who mm-hmm. they are in Christ. You know, you just yes. had uh, your mm-hmm. annual conference. Mm-hmm. I am the, the image, image of God. Of God. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. that's just a furtherance of what you're doing, of yes. speaking and yes. believing on who you are in Christ yes. Jesus. Yes. And because of who you are in Christ mm-hmm. Jesus, your faith matters. Your faith matters extremely because without it, it's impossible to please God. And as we're talking about your faith being a servant, you have to see your faith out there working for you. And like I said, some things God has to work out the details, things that don't happen just uh, immediately like tomorrow <laughs> or a week from now. But if you know that your faith is out there, amen, working in your behalf, you have to keep your confession steadfast. Amen. You know, fear and doubt comes against your mind to try your faith because your mind is actually the battlefield. But you have to sell it in your heart and in your mind. Once you know that you're operating according to the word and according to the revelation of the word, amen, and by the leadership of the Holy Spirit, that faith is in your heart and you release your faith to go to work for you. Your faith is carrying out that assignment. You know, I'm going to give you all a little secret that I use. I was teaching uh, on faith and I wanted, and I gave them a little, one of my secrets. When my faith is out there and the enemy is trying to come against my mind, amen, with doubts, with fears and all of that, a lot of times what I would do, I would just sit still close my eyes and just see my faith out there working for me. See Jesus working for me. See him doing it because he said in his word in St. John 14, 14, whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. And then in St. John uh, 15, 16, part of that scripture, he declares that whatever you ask the father in my name, hallelujah, I'll see to it that it's done. Oh, glory, glory be to God. God. Hallelujah. He's seeing to it that it is done because he's the author and finisher of your faith. So I just just challenge you at different times to just sit back, close your eyes when the enemy is coming against your faith, when your faith is being tried, you know, just close your eyes and see Jesus or see the angel of the Lord, amen, out there working in your behalf, putting everything together. Oh my God, whispering in people's ears, the angel of God vibrating to them, God's uh, ministering spirits going forth, ministering in your behalf yes. because your faith matters. It matters so much to me, saith the Lord, that he declared and decreed that without it, it's impossible to please Mm -hmm. me, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Bishop, I don't don't know what your sermon is today, uh, but I would would believe that the Lord may even continue a little bit of what we're talking about into your your Sunday sermon. Now tell Mm -hmm, us, because mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. this morning, your service starts at 12 noon. At 12 noon, yes. Uh, You're located at 4130 East Lexington, Lexington. right Mm -hmm. there in the the state-of-the-art school. And I know you invite Mm -hmm. folks to come on out today at noon to Mm -hmm. hear what thus saith the Lord, don't you? Yes, because we are starting our summer camp meeting from August the 1st through the 14th. And we have an awesome lineup of speakers every night, every night, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Amen. And you can call 314-261-4348, or you can call my wife at 
714-239-0313. Amen. And the services are every night and Saturday at 6 p.m. and Sunday at 4 p.m. Dynamic speakers, we're talking about the cross, the resurrection, and we're looking for people to be saved. Hallelujah. Feel what the Holy Spirit delivered the whole nine yards Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. And be with us this Sunday, I mean today, mm-hmm. amen, at 12 noon. Mm-hmm. Glory be to Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead, we're just about out of time, but I want to tell folks the scripture that the Lord gave you for the camp meeting for this mm-hmm. 14 days starting yes. August 1st through August 14th. Uh-huh. And it is Romans 1 16 for we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ yes. for it is the power of God unto uh-huh. salvation that's yeah. what it's about yes. that's what it's about yes. In, yes. in closing Bishop say what's on your heart hallelujah I want you to be in this summer camp meeting yes our service starts today at 12 noon but we want you to be in this summer camp meeting bring your testimony bring your shouting shoes your praising shoes it's summer camp meeting and camp meeting is about victory oh my God it's about the power of God and God moving in behalf of the believers. You want to be in this camp meeting. I don't care if you have to hitchhike on a mosquito, borrow your daughter's skateboard, my God, or jump outside on a bumblebee. You need to be at 4130 East Lexington, right off a of natural bridge in Clay, for this summer camp meeting. Go ahead, Evangelist. My Lord, all I can say behind that is the power of God will be there. Yes. No doubt about it. Yes. Thank you, my friend, Bishop Prentice Thomas, for being a part of the program today. Yes. Thank you, Evangelist, for having us in your studio. Amen. He is great. All right, friends, we're going to take a short break right here. Stay with me. I'll be right back. What's going on? It's your boy Scooter, and you are now listening to the CBC Radio Show with Evangelist Nona Thomas. Hello, and welcome back to Dr. Tebow's Cairo Healthy Living Tip. Today's topic is about stress. Are you stressed out? School is starting, traffic jams, bills, work, and your children are all ways to be stressed and overwhelmed with much. Life is full of stress, most of which seems out of your control. Well, I have some great healthy living tips to help you get through the minor bumps without overloading your body with stress and anxiety. Number one, diet. Eating a diet composed of 50 to 75 percent of fresh fruits and vegetables not only supply valuable vitamins and minerals, but also help neutralize your body. Number two, avoid certain foods. Avoiding artificial sweeteners, carbonated drinks, fried foods, pork, sugar, and wheat, flour will help you create less stress on your system. Number three, eliminate dairy products for three weeks. This will help your body return the nervous balance that is needed in your body. Use vitamin D supplements, calcium, and magnesium to get the nutrients that you will need is a bonus. This will help calm your nervous system down and properly restore the balance that is need. Number four, get regular exercise. Physical activity can definitely clear your mind and keep stress under control. Running, walking, or any regular routine of movement will help your body thrive the right way. Number five, last but not least, chiropractic. Chiropractic care can reduce the symptoms associated with stress, including fatigue. Studies have found that you have a 200% greater immune competence in people who receive chiropractic care. Also, those under care did not diminish with age. So next time you or someone you love is feeling pulled in every direction, visit your chiropractor and unwind. Remember, your health is important and so is your spinal health too because getting adjusted can make a big difference inside of you. You can reach me at 636-336-8049 or on Twitter or Instagram at The Pocket Doctor or my Facebook page, Dr. Katrina thompson Baldry. Welcome back to the CBC Radio Show. I'm your host, Evangelist Nona Thomas. Friends, we are so blessed. We've been talking in this month of July with Apostle Frank Bayer, who is our CBC Author of the Month. His book, The Watchman Sees, number two, Seeing Beyond What You See, A More Sure Word of Prophecy, has been a great blessing. So we want to continue that as we have Apostle Frank Bio on the program with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Apostle. Good morning, Evangelist. And how are you this blessed day? Oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to start it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I rejoice. And what's the end? 
and I will be glad in it. Hallelujah. <laughs> so that's good. We're on one accord. We're starting off good. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> well, Apostle, we have just been so blessed as you have been talking with us throughout this month of July about your new book, The Watchman Sees Two. And can you just give us a foundation for those new folks who might be tuning in this morning uh, to tell us about this book? Well, the purpose of this book is basically there's a lot of people that have been questioning about what's going on in the world today. And this book here, basically it explains a lot of the current events in light of Bible prophecy. The, the fact is that a lot of people find that whenever you talk about Bible prophecy, they think the book of Revelation is too complicated. But the fact is that that's the reason why God has put in what we call the sons of Issachar, who are able to see the times, the signs of the times, and are able to explain what is going on. And I believe that that's where we are today. And the purpose of this book is basically to inform and not to cause fear. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's where the biggest problem in the church today, there are many churches today that don't, don't even talk about what we call eschatology of this time, the end times, uh, because of its supposed complexity. But what we're seeing now is not so much as prophesying or those declaring those things that are in the future, even though there's a part of that, but the important thing is explaining everything that we see that's taken place, even before our very eyes. Yes, yes. You, so true, Apostle. Right? Things are developing. I mean, every day. When we go to sleep at night, mm -hmm. you, it's, it's just amazing what we wake up to in the news feed the next day, isn't it? That is correct. That's correct. And the sad part about it is that the news media, the always, uh, they're always feeding on the fear factor. Mm-hmm. Okay, and yet the scripture says, look up, your redemption draweth nigh," which is extremely positive. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and so that's the purpose of this book, is not to uh, dwell on the fear aspect as much as uh, the Word of God gives a solution that, yes, I look at the last chapter of the Bible, and we win. You know, that's the exciting part about <laughs> yes, it. Yes, so. yes, it is. It is. And so um, it's so amazing, Apostle, that as you were writing this book, and we must say that it's in conjunction writing it with Apostle um, uh, Hal Halton Horton, am I correct? Yes, that is correct. Apostle yeah, yeah. Horton, correct, yes. And so, as when you all wrote this book, uh, it's just lining up so with things that are going on right now, especially with what's happening in Europe. Can you expound on that? Yes. Uh, a lot of people don't understand the fact that what England, when it just recently pulled out of the European Union, mm -hmm. uh, it has, uh, that is nothing more than another step going to fulfill prophecy. The reason I say that is because there is a statue that is a vision that a king had by the name of Nebuchadnezzar, and he didn't know what the interpretation was, but there was a man by the name of Daniel, a man of God, that interpreted the vision, and he said, you, the head which is made out of gold represents you, the Babylonian Empire. And he says, and there's going to be another kingdom, which is the chest, that made out of silver, and that represents two kingdoms, the Mede and the Persians. Then later on he says that the waist is made out of brass. We call that the Bronze Age, and we know that to be the Grecian Empire. And it said that the legs are made out of iron, Iron, and that represented the most tyrannical uh, um, uh, empire that ever lived, and that was the Roman Empire. And yet the Roman Empire didn't, was never destroyed. It decayed from inside out, and which then leads us to the ten toes that this whole colossus stands on. It's made out of the toes are made out of iron and clay, representing the fact that they're going to be different political and ideological views but not, they're all not going to agree. What happened is the European Union, or the EEU as it's known, what happened is it has formed this an alliance of all these nations in Europe. There's 28 nations, and a lot of people say, well, then that does not line up with what is going on with those ten toes. Mm -hmm. But just recently with England pulling out of the European Union, now there is a call amongst the member nations 
to reduce the members to 10 nations. Once again, lining up with those 10 yes, toes. Yes. And not only that, but they also want to create their own currency based on gold. They also want to establish a new military, which means that NATO will no longer be a military force to be reckoned with in Europe. So a lot of the things are beginning to line themselves up that these 10 toes, if you will, are going to be standing alone as an entity, but they're going to be a world power. Now, the significance of this out of these ten nations, that's where, in this book, The Watchman Sees, I identify the false prophet. And I also talk about the Antichrist. Now, the Antichrist is a person that emulates a lot of the things that Jesus did, including to the fact that it looks like he's going to be killed but will be raised up again on the third day, emulating Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people do not realize that right now the set of stage, the stage has already been set. This information is in the book. And in a place called Belgium, which seems to be the hub of the European Union, as a matter of fact, there is the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the World Courts, and all of these major, major world powers are housed in Brussels, Belgium. There is one building there that is called the Palais de Justice, or the Palace of Justice. That happens to be where the world courts preside. And uh, evangelists, I'm telling you that if you see it, I checked it out and I did a study and I found that it has four major architectural designs. Mm -hmm. In other words, influences by architecture, right? And it has Grecian, Babylonian, Persian, and Roman, lining up with those four parts of the Colossus that Daniel seen. And therefore, we're beginning to see everything now is beginning to fall into place, and we're seeing everything is beginning to line itself up for this great world religious leader and this great world um, uh, military leader, which we call the Antichrist. Apostle Bio, it is yes. just amazing. You know, uh, as you were talking and as I'm listening and 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 it's it's revelation on on many of the things that you're saying even to me. Uh all I could say behind what you just said mm -hmm. is folks, Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Amen. Th that's that's the bottom line. Yes. And and what he has done, he has used uh, uh, vessels as yourself and Apostle Horton to yes. to really just wake us up. You know, it's it's almost right. it's it's like you just want to shake shake the world and yes. say wake up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but that's there right. are things that we have to be aware of, and that's yes. what this book does, right? Exactly. And it does another thing too. Is it also makes us, as you were saying, is we have to get our houses in order if we truly believe that Jesus is coming back, we need to get our vertical relationship right. And what that's going to do is when I have my relationship, my vertical relationship right, uh, uh, evangelist, that means my horizontal relationships begin to fall into place. Mm -hmm. So therefore, what happens is when the, the people of God begin to raise, uh, rise up and they say, Lord, we want revival in the house. We want us to go back to the core values of what we believe in. Then what ends up happening is you're going to see a lot of these problems that we see in our communities beginning to subside when the church begins to take its rightful place. Yes. All of those things have to go away. Yes, yes. You said it. When the church begins yes. to take its rightful place, first of all, it's something wrong with that sentence, but, you know, that's right. just where we are. You know, uh, I, I've often said that Jesus is standing at the door of the church, knocking, yes. knocking right. to get in. Oh, that's we right. got to let him in. And yeah. when we know, you know, because people will say that they'll get so desensitized with so much that is happening in the world, Apostle, yes. that we overlook the signs. We overlook yes. the warnings. And this book, The Watch sees tell us. I want to let my listeners know, if you're just tuning in this morning, we're talking with Apostle Frank Bio, the author of The Watchman Sees 2, book number two, Seeing Beyond What You See, A More Sure Word of Prophecy. And, you know, that book, that title, that says it all right there, A More Sure Word of Prophecy. We even need more than what we've had, right? Amen, amen. Now, one thing I want to say, Apostle, you are available. You know, you travel the country, yes. travel the country teaching on this book and, and other subjects. So how can folks book you to come into their church, into their ministry and talk about this? 
if they will go to my uh, my email address, it's bioministries at gmail.com. They can communicate with me via my email, and I'll be more than glad to uh, send them a flyer and some literature and even some demo CDs so that they can get a better understanding of our, ma- uh, of our ministry. And I also have a website, which is bioministries.com, and in there there are articles, and I'm getting ready to expand it with teaching videos. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a work in progress, but I know that they will be blessed. Amen. And Apostle, spell your last name for us so we'll make sure they get that. It's B as in boy, A-I-O. Wonderful. Now, where can we go to get the book as well? That would be also on bioministries.com bioministries.com now yes. this is one of you know you've written other books as well can you yes. can you kind of tell us a couple of the yeah. other uh, books that you've written right. Apostle? the first the first book is watchman uh, watchman sees book one and that is the the Issachar generation we now have this book here which is the watchman sees book two we also have a book called the demise of the Republic which talks about the demise or where America is in Bible prophecy a Another one is called You Could Be a Giant Killer, and this talks about the weapons of our warfare. They're not just only the sword of the Spirit, but they're a multiplicity of weapons that God has given us to be victorious in life and in ministry. And then I have another book which has really, really been popular. It's called God's Word is a Medicine. It talks about healing, and I'm going to say this. The Bible tells us that healing is the believer's bread. Mm Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. therefore, if you're going through a physical problem, this uh, this book will not only encourage you, but it'll give you scriptures that you can declare into the spirit realm over your physical, emotional, spiritual, uh, everything, and relational problems, and this will help you to overcome those challenges. I love that. Uh, give us that title again one more time, would you, Apostle? The la- this last one is God's Word is a Medicine. Yes, yes. That's it right there. <laughs> God's Word is a Medicine medicine. Hallelujah. Apostle, I know that uh, the Lord has just downloaded. I mean, it's it's apparent that the Lord has downloaded you with so much information to give to the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And I know that even with all that he's done up to this point, you've got a couple more books in you. I know that you're probably working on, don't you? Right. I have one book that has just been released as well, which I have not been able to put it in on my website and everything like that. It's called Allah is Not Our God. And I believe we're going to be showcasing that sometime next month. And uh, there's another one that I'm in the process of working on. is called The Journey of the Blood. Mm. That is a very, very powerful book. It talks about the blood as we see it from the book of Genesis all the way through the book of Revelation. And I don't think that the Church of Jesus Christ understands the power of the blood. Andre Crouch wrote that song, and he sings it, The Blood Will Never Lose Its Power. Uh, yeah. That says it all. That's that's that that's it. That's the exclamation point right there. Yes. <laughs> well, Apostle, we're about out of time today. Yes. Uh, I, I just thank you so much for being a part of the program. Is there anything else that you'd like to say in closing? I just want to uh, tell the your hearers that are listening to this broadcast and to to this this segment. Uh, I'm just saying I'm tr- I'm praying right now that the Lord of Glory, uh, that Jesus who's going to come back soon for a church without spot or blemish, will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory, for God has already sent forth his word on your behalf to accomplish his purpose, that he receives all of the honor, the glory, and the power, and the praise. Look up, remember, put on your praise, for your praise will make a way for your victory. Hallelujah. That's good news this morning. Thank you so much, Apostle Frank Bio, our CBC July Author of the Month. Bless you, sir. Bless you, Evangelist. All right, friends, we're going to take a short break. I'll be right back. What's going on? It's your boy Scooter, and you are now listening to the CBC Radio Show with Evangelist Nona Thomas. Hi, this is Evangelist Nona Thomas, inviting you to tune in to Hallelujah 1600 at 4 p.m. every Wednesday for the midweek message. Friends, let me tell you, this program will encourage you. It will inspire you. It will be the boost that will be right on time in the Word of God for your Wednesday afternoon. So tune in every Wednesday, 4 p.m., right here on Hallelujah 1600 for the midweek message with Evangelist Nona Thomas. To God be the the glory. 
What's your hungry? Eight or fourteen? At Banana Yummies Bakes and Burgers, you can choose from our tongue tempting eight ounce house burgers or go for our monstrously delicious fourteen ounce stuffed burgers. That's a whole lot of yum. Not quite that hungry? Try our four ninety nine value meals or sliders. We use 100% ground beef or turkey in our specialty burgers. No fillers. We're located at 497 Airport Road and are open Tuesday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. We're closed on Sundays and Mondays, giving the community an opportunity to rent out our spacious location. At Banana Yummy's Bakes and Burgers, we have live entertainment, open mic and karaoke night, family-friendly games, and a great staff to make your visit an enjoyable one. Come for the fun, stay for the yum. Come see us at 497 Airport Road. Call us at 314-594-7335. That's 314-594-7335. Welcome back to the CBC Radio Show. I'm your host, Evangelist Nona Thomas. And friends, we've been talking about banana yummies throughout the month of July, and we can't get enough of it. So we're going to talk about it again this morning because we've got some great things to tell you on the specials that are coming up this week and all that good stuff. So I want to welcome back to the CBC Radio Show, Miss Andrea Stewart, the owner, the chef, the woman of Banana Yummies. Good morning. Good morning. (laughs) You know the drill. Uh, Is this the day that the Lord has made for you? This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I tell you, we can rejoice when you can open your mouth to that, to the size of those hamburgers (laughs) (laughs) at Banana Yummies. Yeah, yeah. He's blessed you. (laughs) (laughs) And so, you know, just in case there's somebody who missed hearing about Banana Yummies during this month of July, Tell us about this wonderful vision that God has manifested. Well, um, uh, I do. It is truly a, a God vision because anything that's bigger than you, hmm. uh, then you know that you need God to complete it. Uh, but yeah, here at Banana Yummies, uh, we're actually called Bakes and Burgers. So not only do we do uh, custom design cakes, um, you know, to your vision, uh, but we also have we call ourselves the uh, home of the stuffed burger. So yeah, we have our eight ounce house burgers, and of course we have our I call them monstrous uh, 14 ounce stuffed <laughs> burgers. Yes. <laughs> It monstrous is the word to, d- to describe. Uh, and, and, you know, I really got to pause right there, too, because, you know, people will say, well, she might put a whole bunch of lettuce and tomato and different things like that. But the meat is thick, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, we, we don't play around with uh, with fillers or, you know, now, we, of course, we do put our vegetables on there. To, sure. You know, you kind of uh, make you feel good about eating all that uh, burger. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we actually use, uh, like I said, for our house burgers, that's a half of a pound of 100% pure ground beef. And then on our stuffed burgers, um, you, you're, you they weigh in at 14 ounces. So you're definitely getting, uh, you know, your money's worth when you come to Banana Yummies. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Now, I know that you have a a, a special burger. Uh, all of your burgers are special, but there's one that you're featuring um, this month. Tell us about that one. Yes, the one we're featuring this month is called our Nashville Hot Burger. Uh, it's actually uh, uh, owed to the Nashville Hot Chicken craze that's kind of going on. Uh, it's definitely not for the faint of heart. It is uh, our 8-ounce uh, burger. Beef patty that is actually dipped in our own special recipe, Nashville hot sauce. Uh, and then it also has uh, something to kind of help you cool down just a little bit. We <laughs> call it our yum sauce uh, that we put on there uh, and with the other ingredients to uh, make it a nice experience for you. Yes, yes. One of the things that I, I, and we'll get back to the menu in just a second, but this just came to mind. One of the things I really love about the atmosphere at um, Banana Yummies is the different games you encourage, it's like you encourage bar flies okay i mean you know <laughs> you've got uh checkers you've got what's that thing you throw darts um you know you've got all these different activities ping pong to encourage people to have fun where you can actually you know bring the kids and just have a relaxing time you've got the stage i mean that's great exactly yes we try to make it a nice family friendly uh, environment you know we do the ping pong tables and of course we have the 
the games uh, on the tables as well so that, you know, when you come, you can come, you know, spend a little time, you know, enjoy a great meal. Uh, on the weekends, we have uh, live entertainment or karaoke, uh, open mic nights, and different things like that. So that when you come here, you know, like we said, you come for the fun, but you're also going to stay for the yum. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Because there, it, it's, it, it really encompasses everything. You're in a wonderful location. Tell us where you're located. We are located at uh, 497 Airport Road here in Ferguson, Missouri, right on the border between Ferguson and Berkeley, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're actually, uh, if you're going toward 170, we're just before uh, you get to the Emo's uh, Pizza location there. Yes, yes. I mean, that's I mean that's a central area. Everybody knows about that. Yes. Um, now, you have these fantastic value meals as well that folks can, you know, run in and take advantage of during the week, like maybe for lunchtime? Definitely. Uh, if you'd like to just kind of grab and go, uh, we have our four ninety nine value meals. Uh, we actually call them our grab and go value meals. Mm -hmm. um, you can either get uh, our value burger or two sliders. Uh, it comes in with, you know, chips and a drink. And so it's, it's it's perfect for, you know, especially the businesses around here or if you're just looking to grab something a little smaller and something pretty quick uh, so that you can, you know, come and grab a quick meal. Yes, yes. And not only do you, of course, you know, you've, you've got that 100 uh, percent, you know, that beef, you know, and, and piled high and all of that. But, you know, there may be someone who, you know, they make like turkey. You've got a great um, uh, apple onion um, stuffed Ooh, burger. Uh. Tell us about that. <laughs> Yes, it's that apple onion gouda. Um, we here at Banana Yummies, we definitely like to uh, experiment with flavor profiles. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we don't just uh, give you just a beef patty. We we put a lot of love into it and a lot mm -hmm. of consideration. And so we do have our turkey burgers for our turkey lovers. And actually, the turkey burger is my favorite. Mm. Um, that one that you were referring to is our uh, apple onion gouda, uh, where it's stuffed with apples and uh, caramelized onions and gouda cheese. Um, there on our, and that's one of our 14 ounce burgers. So again, you're definitely going to get your money's worth, and your tongue will also be happy. <laughs> My goodness, I'm 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 an okay turkey girl, but just the way that you describe it, and I, I'm going to have to try that. I'm going to have <laughs> to do it because it's so unique. I, I love it. Now, now your yummy desserts. We don't want to leave that out. Tell us a little bit about the yummy desserts. Definitely. Well, our desserts change every day, uh, so you'll have a different experience every time that you come. Uh, we have noticed that one of our more popular uh, items has been our red velvet gooey butter cake, oh. uh, which we've actually <laughs> been getting people coming asking for it on days that we don't actually have it, so we're <laughs> looking at maybe adding that one in uh, a few more times. And then, of course, we have one, uh, another favorite is our uh, caramel butter uh, bunt cakes. Um, and any and the thing that's great is that any of the items that we do have, we have them in the individual portions here. But of course, you could always order them in a full size if you like it as well. Yes, yes. And um, one other thing is that we also custom design cakes. So, uh, which is one of the things I I am a heart, uh, artist at heart, and so I love to uh, decorate and uh, do the sculptured cakes. And so that's another thing, another aspect that people are a little surprised when they come in and uh, to a place called Banana Yummies. But we're uh, <laughs> we're not only we're not just uh, baking but we also burger. Yes, you do. Well, once again, tell us your hours of operation, location, phone number, because folks can call in their order and have it, it'll be ready when they get there. Give us all that. Awesome. Yes, our address here is 497 Airport Road. Again, that's in Ferguson, Missouri. Uh, we're in between New Florissant and 170. Um, and our phone number here is 314-594-7335. Uh, and you can always uh, visit us on Facebook, where we do have our calendar of events, so you can see the different uh, things that we do have. We have a great band, a uh, local band that's coming in on the 13th of August called the Retro Band. Uh, and then we also have, you know, events that occur during the day for those uh, that like to come in and stop in. We have things like Coffee with Kevin and Midday Meditation. So, you know, the customers have a wide range of things that they can do when they come. A wide range of things they can do when they come. I agree. Well, I want to thank you so much for being a part of the CBC radio show. Miss Andrea Stewart of Banana Yummies, Bakes and Burgers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It was a great pleasure. All righty, friends. We're going to take a short break. Stay with me. I'll be right back. What's going on? It's your boy Scooter, and you are now listening to the CBC Radio Show with Evangelist Nona Thomas. 
What's Your Hungry? 8 or 14. At Banana Yummies Bakes and Burgers, you can choose from our tongue-tempting 8-ounce house burgers or go for our monstrously delicious 14-ounce stuffed burgers. That's a whole lot of yum. Not quite that hungry? Try our $4.99 value meals or sliders. We use 100% ground beef or turkey in our specialty burgers. No fillers. We're located at 497 Airport Road and are open Tuesday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. We're closed on Sundays and Mondays, giving the community an opportunity to rent out our spacious location. At Banana Yummy's Bakes and Burgers, we have live entertainment, open mic and karaoke night, family-friendly games, and a great staff to make your visit an enjoyable one. Come for the fun, stay for the yum. Come see us at 497 Airport Road. Call us at 314-594-7335. That's 314-594-7335. Friends, haven't we had a wonderful time today? Truly, God is worthy to be praised for what he is doing in the CBC Christian Business Connection radio show. I want to thank all of my guests. You are wonderful. God is doing some great things in your businesses and your ministries. And keep up the fantastic work. I encourage you all to go to my website of thecbcradioshow.com to get more information about our guests and about the things that are going on with the Christian Business Connection. If you'd like to be a guest, Give me a call, 314-270-2225, 314-270-2225. As always in closing, to God be the glory. Christian Business Connection, connecting your business or ministry to the world.